And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and rock cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Back in the Mighty 1090 studios after a very successful tackle day. Lots of fun yesterday. No Pete today. He's out doing a little bit of field research. But boy, do we have a great show for you today. Captain Mike Pritchard from the Tribute is going to be in talking all kinds of fishing. We have a lot to talk about. Hang on, the season is definitely not over yet. Lots of Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. You stay tuned. It's Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice on the Mighty 1090. The new Shimano Torium HG is here, and you'll be able to experience this fantastic reel now at your local Shimano dealer. The new Torium is up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and is tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The new Shimano Torium HG is not only better on the outside, the inside is amazing with a cross carbon drag providing up to 24 pounds of drag pressure from a star drag reel. It has a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears. The machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easy to crank in the big fish. The new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control. Available in three sizes, the Torium HG is the next evolution in compact, rigid, and powerful saltwater star drag reels. Get it now at your local Shimano dealers. This is Greg Stotesbury from from AFCO. For over 20 years, AFCO has been known for its traditional fishing shorts. We now will also be known for our new line of next generation fishing and board shorts. Our new M82 tactical fishing shorts feature quick dry, high tech, two way stretch fabric, zipper fly, six functional pockets plus pliers pocket, sublimated camo print, and our DWR finish so your shorts don't get stained. Also new to the AFCO line are the M25 Stingray board shorts. The Stingray board shorts feature new quick dry four-way mind stretch fabric modern zipper fly two technical high cargo pockets with inverted zippers silicone printed draw cords along with our dwr finish to repel stains both shorts are new to the afco line and come in a variety of colors and sizes these technically advanced fishing and board shorts continue afco's long tradition of providing the world's finest fishing and board shorts. Check them out today at Better Shops Everywhere. I'm very excited to share my experience with the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 touchscreen chart plotter and sonar unit I just installed on my boat. I've been a Simrad electronics fan for many years and always enjoyed the ease of use and incredible technology. Last year I installed the new 4G broadband radar and could not believe the difference. So this year I upgraded to the new NSS Evo 2 and it's amazing. With an easy-to-use tablet-style interface that's fresh but familiar, the Simrad NSS Evo 2 combines a multi-touch screen with push-to-select rotary dial for precision control and speedy response. The core of any marine electronic for me is how it marks fish, and the new NSS Evo 2 with built-in sonar hub sounder technology, including chirp and structure scan, can't be beat. Now, the true test is whether I need to pick up the manual to figure it out. And guess what? The new Simrad gear is so easy, I didn't need it. There is a lot more to the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 system I'd like to tell you, but best to just go to your local Simrad dealer and check it out. Or see simrad-yachting.com for more details. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Looking forward to having this show today. This guy sitting across from us, Captain Mike Pritchard from the Tribute. Mike, good to have you this morning, bro. Hey, good morning, gang. Yeah, good to, good to have you here this morning. Pete, like I said, can we do a little field research today? So he's not going to be joining us, but man, we have a lot to talk about today. And it's November, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's getting late into November, but Tribute's still running, still fishing, still fish to be caught. What's going on? I, you know what? Is this uh, kind of a recap on last year? I think I was in here in February last year, and there was still <laughs> good tuna fishing. Well, boat got in this morning. Uh, Captain Hensley ran it. Uh, started off trying to get a little bit of bluefin on the Tanner Bank, picked up a handful of bluefin. Um, 
some yellowtail, and then moved on out to the Cortez Bank where they had phenomenal fishing. Uh, well over uh, 280 mixed fish for the day. Uh, it ended it. It is November. Uh, yellow 280 fin, mixed fish for the day. 196 yellowtail to go with it. Um, I, I know the, the Pacific Queen was out there as well and had very, very good fishing on yellowfin and yellowtail. So don't put the rods away. Oh. I had... <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's time to pick up a gun and go bird hunting. <laughs> I just got back from a, a fun week in Mammoth uh, doing a little bit of duck hunting and uh, trout fishing. But if, if there's a chance to get on a boat right now, it's still very, very good, if not better than it has been uh, during the summer, just like it was last year, and the crowds are dying down. This is it. You know, I mean, as a fisherman, these are the things you look for. You know, we get these stretches. Obviously, you know, not the next couple of days. we got a little bit of wind coming. But you get these stretches of these crazy nice days, like I'm sure everybody experienced yesterday. Today is looking to be the same thing. You know, you get those stretches of consistent weather. And, I mean, there is, there's as good a fishing right now as there has been all summer long. Yep, yeah, same kind of deal. Um, very, very good tuna fishing, very good yellowtail fishing. I, I do feel bad. We had a charter that we had to reschedule last uh, Monday due to weather. So we rescheduled them for tonight, which obviously you're talking about the weather and <laughs> that worked out. That just favor. just just a couple of bad bad days, but after uh, after Tuesday, it looks like it's supposed to get really really nice yeah. uh, once again. You know, we have this little bit of low pressure moving through, and we definitely need some more rain. Um, but after this uh, this little little chunk of weather moves through, it looks like it's going to get really nice again. And uh, we do have another day and a half trip, uh, open party day and a half trip, sponsored by Seeker coming up this Friday night. Uh, we are down to our, our fall pricing, so it's uh, a little bit cheaper, nice. $300. Uh, limited low trip, limited to 32 guys. So, uh, man, if, if you want to get out there and uh, ch- get a chance to get on uh, on a boat and catch some more yellowfin, yellowtail, and we are starting to see more bluefin again, and that is a, a, a huge deal. Last year we had the same, same setup. Very, very good yellowfin fishing up until about early December, and then it switched to uh, straight bluefin. So we're going to... Do everything we can to take advantage of that again. What an exciting I don't know, phenomenon, event, whatever you want to call it, last year. Having that fishing going all winter long. And, and man, my hat goes off to you because you did such a good job keeping the boat running and keeping things going. And I, I remember week after week on Let's Talk Hookup, you calling. And, you know, you guys hit almost every trip. And the thing that was so cool was on the ones where you you maybe had lesser counts, you know, you just would be on the show. We, we really want to keep this thing running. We really want to keep the goat going. And, and, you know, you push through a couple of weeks of, I would just call it average fishing. It's not like you ever blanked, but tougher and kept going, kept going, and, and things just got steady. And you guys figured the fishing out, and the fish continued to get better. And, I mean, that, that tribute was out there all winter long catching tuna. We, we did. We ran uh, every month of the year, which is pretty unheard of for an overnighter, you know, small multi-day boat um our best fishing last year was in february uh, <laughs> in december there was a there was a couple of stretches there where we had phenomenal fishing and, and the the passenger uh, load started dropping down i remember a, a trip i think it was right after christmas between christmas and new year's i actually went out of my way to to put take one of our sponsors one of every one of our sponsors whether it was uh, seeker akuma soft steel ultra ballast point and donate personal boat uh, items um, on on that trip just because I was so stoked to be running after yeah. after Christmas, and the trip was phenomenal. There, um, I think 150 bluefin. There's some yellowtail with it, and then January we ran every weekend, and then February we were running three trips a week, and it was uh, I mean some got some really really <laughs> good fishing, good. just really good fishing. So uh, there was a couple of trips. Uh, there is uh, trips we ran with eight people out there just to keep it going. That uh that eight trip load I, I think they ended up with like ninety something blue from wow. it so unbelievable kind of worked out <laughs> yeah I, I'll say I'll say it kind of worked out well and it's really exciting to hear that you guys are starting to see the setup kind of go in the same direction as last year I mean and and what what is it when you say that things are looking like last year is it just is it just the presence of fish is it the water is it the bait is it all those things I mean when you say that things are starting to shape up the you know that way for uh, you know our fall and even wintertime tuna what um what is it that you're seeing? Uh, a lot of it's water temp, and uh, as most of us know, is it, um, we thought last year was kind of an El Nino year. Uh, we're assuming that was the start of this year's El Nino. Um, you know, the presence of Wahoo last year, a little bit of uh, blue marlin, black marlin. This year was obviously just that much better. Still warm water. The water out on the Cortez and the Tanner has dropped down a little bit to a, a chilly 65 degrees <laughs> for, for winter. And if you look just inside there around the uh, the butterfly bank and – I, you're still seeing water in, in the low to almost mid-70s, which is just crazy for this time of year. 
There's still fish there. There's really no reason for them to go anywhere. Um, I know uh, talking to some of the uh, uh, guys that have done research on, on this fish moving in, they think a lot of the fish is moving in from out west, out from the Hawaii region, not necessarily from down south, whether it's the Wahoo, the Dorado, the Yellowfin, Bluefin, everything else. I know last year we were catching Bluefin on the bank that were tagged in Japan the year before. So yeah. they, there, there's fish, uh, plenty of warm water, plenty of bait around, and there's really no reason for it to go anywhere. Let me say the same thing. A fish doesn't have a calendar. You know, They don't know what the month of November or the month of <laughs> December is. They know conditions, water temperature and food. And if those two things are right, why go anywhere? Yeah, and, and that Cortez Tanner Bank is really a good setup. So is the uh, the 60 Mile Bank. All those areas have the ability uh, to really sustain good fall fishing, whether it's yellowfin or bluefin. And, and it's funny, uh, you're talking about the fish not having a calendar. There's a lot of fishing done on the U.S. side of the border this year, and it's um, I just got to throw it out there because it was a couple of small complaints about not fishing Mexico. <laughs> uh, the fish don't care what side of the border yeah, they're on. They, they, they don't have to check a card. They don't have to show an ID <laughs> when they cross the border. It it was very, very good fishing all the way up the coast. I mean, I was watching a video on Facebook yesterday of a guy getting a blue marlin behind Santa Cruz Island, and I just, I, I, from being from Ventura County, I, I think it's just awesome. I mean, so just, cool. you know, some of the, uh, Sean Stewart on the Loja Spirit went up and had uh, slow yellowtail fishing, so they went offshore and they knocked the, the crud out of the big yellowfin. I mean, <laughs> Dude, that's almost you know that's almost in point conception. That's yeah, awesome. that's up there. That's really cool. It's been a it's been a wild season, and how cool that so much of that fish. I mean, it really was. It was camped right in front of home. I mean, there was like you said. Sometimes you get guys complaining that you know they're fishing so close to home, but it, I mean that's you. Tribute goes where the fish are at, and if the fish are close to home, that's where you're going to go because you're going to put a catch together. That's it. We we did have some very very good fishing. Very good fishing. Uh, 12 miles from home, and and that's it. And, you know, a lot of guys uh, fish in the past, and they're used to getting on a boat and running full nice. speed, running 10 knots throughout the night, getting down to the area and fishing it, and you get used to that, and I guess that's what you expect. But the nice thing about fishing uh, that close to home is there's trips where we fished, and we really have pushed that whole one-day thing lately where we fished from almost daylight till dark. And, uh, you know, you're still coming in, you're still getting to go home at night, but it really, the amount of fishing time um, when you're fishing that close to home is pretty amazing. And uh, that's just where they have been. It's, there's no reason to keep going. That's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Well, one thing I definitely want to talk about, too, is just the boat. You know, now that you've, you've had the boat for several years now and, you know, and, and are, are the, the open party run at Seaforth Sport Fishing, and you guys have done such an awesome job with that boat. But, you know, for those of us that haven't had a chance to come fishing on the Tribute yet, I'm sure you've heard about it on Let's Talk Hookup. You've seen it on, you know, you guys do a great job keeping your social media accounts updated. But for those people that haven't uh, been on board the boat or know the history of the Tribute, maybe you could kind of fill us in a little bit. Uh, most people would still know the boat, and uh, it's always going to – I mean, it was built as the Polaris 3 for Bill Poole. Um, very, very awesome fishing platform designed by him and uh, Dittmar Donaldson. I mean, it was uh, Bill Poole's first real long-range boat. Uh, a lot of 7- to 10-day trips on it. Um, a lot of Guadalupe trips, a lot of Alejos Rocks trips. I mean, the, the boat was designed. It's low to the water. It's wide. Lots of room up the side. It used to have a giant fish hold on it. Um, we've kind of uh, changed the fish hold con uh, configuration just a little bit to be a little more R RSW friendly. But it used to have a fish hold that went from the engine room to the transom. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> different day and age, different style of fishing. I, I can't even imagine how many black sea bass have gone through that thing. <laughs> but, um, it Old days of Guadalupe. used to have a 20-foot wide by like a 20 by 16 fish hold. I mean, it's just ridiculously large. <laughs> Um, that's how it was built. Um, Giffen ended up buying it and naming it the Holiday in uh, at, at maybe 1970-ish, okay. right in there. And most people would know it as the Holiday. It used to have a giant uh, crow's nest on it, big H, easy to see from anywhere in the ocean. If you saw that thing on the horizon, it was one of two <laughs> boats, either the Qualifier 105 or the uh, the Holiday. Big mast. Um, uh, Tim Boaklander had uh, changed it, kind of got rid of that, that crow's nest. I, I miss it. Um, I don't know if there's a chance of it ever coming back. But it, it was when I first came down here and started working on the producer, I used to stare at that boat and I just <laughs> What a, a, a beautiful boat. Really well uh, put together, great lines. It was the, uh, the holiday for years. It kind of went through a little uh, change. It was the Dolphin 3 when I uh, purchased it and uh, named it Tribute accordingly um, to Bill Poole. It, it's a tribute to him. First one of his boats that sold after he had passed, and uh, 
just a really nice way to carry on. Awesome. Just a nice way to kind of carry on his name and uh, his background, you know. And uh, thankfully, I think we've done a pretty good job at it. There's no doubt about it. The boat is amazingly comfortable. And like you said, it's it's low, it's wide, and, and you guys have, you know, not, not that the boat needed a ton of work, but you put a ton of work into it regardless. And, and every year I always see you guys busy and you know, the, the couple times I've had a chance to go fishing with you, I'd always say, like, man, you guys did such a good job. And you're the type of guy that, you know, well, yeah, we did, but I still want to do this. And oh, yeah. know, always, always doing things that us as passengers probably don't see. And, and I think that's such a good sign. You know, you got a lot of pride in that boat, and you should because it's a really nice one. There's uh, now there's going to be a fair amount of work this year. We are uh, repowering. We did get approved for our, our grant for new engines, which that boat has seen more action in the last few years than it had in the last 10 years probably combined. Um, I, I don't know. I think we ran somewhere around 250 days this year. Wow. And <laughs> you, you kind of get down there and you're looking at these old mains and the uh, those cats, those 3406 cats that we have on the boat are just amazing engines. you got to really appreciate anything as long as it has fuel, air, and oil. It's going to run. run. And um, it, it's time for those things to go and definitely, definitely in need after these last couple of years. But that's going to be one of the things coming up, cool. um, and uh, I do have another bait tank that's probably going to be going on. It just, it, it's hard to stop fishing when you have this kind of fishing. Oh. Last year we did get uh, get in and do some painting and and some stuff, but it, there's going to be, man, it, it's hard to pick a month where you're going to say, hey, this is the one we need to, you know, drop a month and do our bow work. But last year was, uh, it was kind of a record breaker as far as I know. <laughs> we were not going to pass up that bluefin fishing and. A lot of people will still come on the boat, and they're man, what a beautiful boat. I, I love your boat. And I, I look at it going, man, it needs some care. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good sign if you if you, if you you feel that way. And, boy, it's been, uh, like you say, what a, what a tough call to make. You know, when do you when do you take a month off when there's tuna every month of the year? I, I, I think we're shooting for February. <laughs> um, between then and now, we're going we're gonna to keep this going as long as we can. I, um, I would imagine after last year there's going to be more guys trying to jump on the, uh, the bandwagon. Um, it, it was pretty comical. Guys asking me why I was still running in November last year. So, well, you know, it's it's Thanksgiving. Why are you still running? I said, well, fishing is better than it has been all year, and I we can't stop. I said, when the fish stop showing up, we'll stop running, and it never happens. Yeah. Why are you running in in you know in November? Well, because that's how I'm going to get my December, my February. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was looking at um at one of our uh, daily logs from December, and it was like, oh man, it was a hundred. 83 yellow fin there was blue fin with it there was yellow tail with it i i mean it was just and and that was like december 12th or something <laughs> and, and it looked better than our fish counts did like the entire year so i i mean that that's that's enough right there to keep it going you got it well, we're talking about that to come and i like, guess you said too i mean just let's not ignore the fact that the fishing right now is great you know it's really, it's really good you know there's some there's some great fishing going on and great fun to be had too and speaking of great fun man we want you to join us this morning on let's talk cook up as we say a lot of times very difficult to get a guy like mike that's so busy on the boat lots of stuff going on and we're so stoked to have a couple hours to talk a lot of fishing and you want to talk about the guy to talk about the boat, the fish, and the gear. It's going to be an awesome show today, and we would love to hear from you. If you want to be a part of Let's Talk Cookup this morning, there's two ways you can reach us. First is with our local line, which is 858 area code 457-1090. Again, 858 858- Four five seven ten ninety. That's our local number. Or you can reach us toll free. That toll free line eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. Our local line's already getting packed up, but we do have toll free line open right now eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. Not only going to be taking your phone calls, talking all kinds of great information. Boy, we have got a great prize for you too. And want to thank Mike so much. One lucky caller is going to get to go fishing on a day and a half trip aboard the Tribute. Just awesome. So stoked about that, Mike. Very generous you guys. And that might be for fishing right now while well, the fishing's still good or, or one of these, you know, upcoming trips when we're hopefully catching bluefin all winter long or, or going fishing next springtime. But getting to go fishing aboard the Tribute on a day and a half trip, we really want to thank you again for that. And again, if you want to get your shot at that trip or better yet, your chance to talk to Captain Mike, 858 457 1090 or 877 1090 When we come back, we're going to be taking those phone calls. Lots of great information coming your way. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Brother had a wish. 
The summer fishing season this year was nothing short of incredible, and everyone I talked to is expecting continued success well into the fall season. Your San Diego County Ford dealers are having a remarkable summer, too, with no sign of slowing down. They continue to hook people up with a great selection of models that offer outstanding MPG and advanced technology, like the fun-to-drive Focus and the popular Fusion, available as a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Ford also has an impressive list of SUVs, like Escape, Edge, Explorer, and Expedition. Well, no matter what you need, Ford has an SUV for you. And for serious fishermen that have boats to haul and gear to move, you can't beat the Ford F-150. It's not only stronger than ever, it's 700 pounds lighter, so it's faster and more efficient. Bottom line, Ford cars and trucks and SUVs are built for San Diego. Stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Here's John Ireland. For Rancho Leonero. Ranch is small, you know. It's very personal, very intimate. I don't think there's anywhere else that you could have the old Baja feel and have all those miles of beachfront, the Palapa roofs and the stone walls. There's not a room that you don't have some kind of ocean view. You don't give up any amenities at the ranch. It's just very rustic. You know how when you cook outdoors it tastes better? Well, that's Rancho Leonero. It just tastes better. We have paddle boards. We've got kayaks. We've got snorkeling equipment, of course. We've got 12 super pockets. We have dive trips. We've got over 40 kayaks at the hotel. We've got all accurate equipment, very top of the line. And um, when the fishing's good, we'll freeze your fish, pack it all up, send it home with you. People love it. They'll come back five, six times a year. That's the highest accolade we can get. 1-800-646-2252. 646-Baja. And RanchoLandArrow.com. It's unique. It's big, it's comfortable, and she is beautiful. The -the state-of-the-art, long-range sport fishing vessel, the Independence. Veteran captains Mark Paisano and Paul Strasser built this incredible 112-foot vessel with the most modern technology and luxurious comfort available. Captain Jeff Dubois has helped make the Independence a top-notch operation. Call Independence Sport Fishing at 619-226-6006 or check the availability on spring, summer, and fall trips now at independentsportfishing.com. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the Long Range Fishing Experience. A spring 8-day, summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back, 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality Long Range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cookup. On the mighty 1090, phones are packing up here pretty solid. Hey, with that, we're going to find out what's going on on the water right now. Talk to Captain Drew Card is online from the Pacific Queen. What's up, Drew? Morning, guys. How's it going? Uh, we're doing great, man. We had a great time at Tackle Days yesterday. Really busy and really appreciate you coming down and doing a seminar. That was a lot of fun. And I know a lot of people were looking forward to hearing you talk about fishing. But while you were doing that, there was some pretty good fishing going on. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rick. I- Missed out on one of the best days of the year. <laughs> out there. What do you but, mean uh, missed out on? You were there for it. It was tackle day. Best day of the year. <laughs> it sounds like no, they did no, okay without you. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it was cool uh, getting to do that. And, yeah, the the guys crushed it yesterday. It was excellent fishing. Obviously, uh, Muddy's boat was out there. They had great fishing, too. But, man, what's going on right now is insane. We you know, the guys ended up with 137 yellowfin and 194 yellowtail. It's, oh what is it, the second week <laughs> oh in November? Gosh. Crazy. No way. No yeah, they, way. They just had an incredible trip, epic fishing, and, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost, like, hard to put words to it. It's just great what's going on right now. We would have killed for that in August, and right. it's November. <laughs> Any yeah, no, no, no I mean, any anything and and I'm sure light loads to be had right now and this crazy good fishing and this crazy good season just just shows no sign of slow and what um it, I mean similar size fish that we've been catching most of the year I mean uh good obviously good biting fish good weather what's uh what's the particulars on that kind of stuff Drew? Well you know they they had beautiful weather the, the fish has been all spread out out there you know on different different grades of yellowfin and tuna they've had you know we had we saw fish that was just slightly better than that. I'd say that kelp patty fish that we saw here locally mm-hmm. on the beach. Uh, we saw fish out there, you know, we've seen fish out there from the 25 to 40 pound range. It's been all mixed up. Gavin told me yesterday for the most part it was 12 to 20 pound fish, you know. Great. Kind of right in that mid range, perfect size fish. 
So, you know, I, in my mind, it's, you know, just what we want to see in, in great, great fish right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. What an unbelievable day, and good for Gavin. Sounds like a great trip and a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm sure with that being said, we're going to keep fishing. No, no reason to hang. You know, one of the very first things that Mike said this morning was no reason to hang the gear up yet. And, boy, how, how true is that? No, no, for sure. And, uh, you know, we, we actually are only going to run this week because we, we already have a pre-scheduled haul-out. So we're going to be hauling out uh, a week from tomorrow. So, Unfortunately, we're going to miss out on the end of November and December, but uh, we do have a couple trips this week, and, and one in particular that I wanted to mention, it was, it was a two-and-a-half day that was scheduled to leave on Monday night. Uh, we've been looking at the weather all week. The weather on Tuesday looks terrible, so we split it up, and we made it into a day and a half. Uh, so we're going to be leaving Tuesday night. The weather on Wednesday looks beautiful. It looks like it's going to be Santa Ana conditions, so we split that trip up so we could still make the trip. Uh, we had like 14 guys on the trip uh, before we split it up. We got to make sure everybody's going to switch over, but it sounded like the guys we called have decided to switch over. So it's probably going to go. Uh, it's going to be a limited load trip, only 25 guys, a little more expensive, but a uh, light load, and we're going to be able to get out there and get in on that good fishing. That's awesome. Right on. Well, if somebody wants to take advantage of that trip or uh, go fishing with you before your, your maintenance uh, period starts, Drew, how do we do that? Uh, you're going to call Fisherman's Landing at 619 221 8500. You can sign up on our website at pacific-queen.com. Like I said, it's uh, Tuesday night. It's the last trip with room. Our weekend trip's already sold out. So uh, if you want to come fishing with us, that'll be the trip. And after that, you're going to have to call uh, C4 Sport Fishing and go on the tribute. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a couple of good calls there, Drew. Great call. Appreciate that. What an unbelievable day. Congratulations to the boat and all the boys that participated. Again, thanks to you for having fun with us yesterday at Tackle Days. And thanks for keeping us up to date. Let us know how the uh, the next one goes. All right, I will. Thanks all right, guys. Drew. Thanks a lot for the phone call there. How cool is that? that, 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 is, that that's this a, is just awesome what's going on right now. That's a good trip to get in on. I mean, with the fishing they had yesterday, the weather on Wednesday does look nice. I, like I said, we had that charter. We're trying to push them to a Wednesday trip, but weather is going to come back down, and you know the fish is there. Exactly. I, I mean, and it's probably going to be a light load. It'd be a good one to get on. The thing that's been so crazy yeah. to me about this year, obviously you guys pay so much more attention to that than I, but but every time we have whatever you want to call it, whatever kind of snafu we have in the weather, our, our water just doesn't seem to be too affected by it. I mean, it, this last little spat of rain and wind we had, I mean, everybody said the same thing. Oh, this is it. This is it. It's over. You know, it's over. It's going to be cold. And the next thing you know, there's Wahoo on the rock pile again. And then and then it, and then then it it gets rain and, and blows. And it's like, okay, well, this one's going to do us in for sure. And there was hundreds of tuna caught yesterday just amongst a couple of you guys. Yes, there was. You know, what, uh, same kind of deal last year. A lot of times you get um, surface warming where you get a little layer of warm water on the surface. A lot of times that happens during a nice stretch of weather. But this, the last couple of years, you know, with these uh, El Nino conditions, I was looking at a, at a graph during that last big hurricane uh, that formed in the, oh, I guess right around the equator. But they they did a graph of the water temperature down 70 to uh, 70 feet. Okay. And a lot of the stuff down below Cabo maintained its like high 80s down wow. 70 feet. And up here, uh, the same thing. The, the water temp, you know, we we're seeing that mid 70s, uh, even low 80s during the summer. Um, that's not just surface temp. That, that that water is is pushed up, you know, pushed from out, uh, oh, out west, and it, it's not just surface temperature. So even if it kind of turns over a little bit, or or if you get a good blow and it blows the surface temp off, it's not a, uh, it's not really going to affect much. It's not like you see it starting to warm up in the summer in a lot of years where you start seeing water in the mid 60s, and then all of a sudden you get two days of wind, and it's back to the high 50s. It's it's not going to be like that. So rad. At least not for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty darn exciting, man, and pretty darn fun. Well, hey, the phone lines are packed up, Mike. I know everybody's really excited to talk to you, so we're going to do just that. We're going to jump right into the phones and start it off this morning with David, who's calling us from Encinitas. David, good morning, and thanks for getting us started here on Let's Talk Hookup. Uh, good morning, guys. Actually, Mike, you initially answered my question about what type of maintenance you guys are doing for uh, this coming year. My question is, do you guys see yourselves doing any early um, five-day spring trips down to uh, Cedras? Uh, yeah, it, it really depends. Same kind of thing last year. Um, really, really hard to predict what's going to happen. But our fishing here locally was really good. Um, kind of defeated the purpose of going down there. If for some reason uh, we we're able to fish Guadalupe, then by all means we will start really focusing on that. I, I know a couple of boats have uh, drawn permits for it. Um, 
and uh, we've had a lot of our people ask about it. Um, if that opens up, I really will. Uh, as far as our early trips, and that's something that's probably going to be going online here, um, th- there's probably going to be some two-and-a-half and maybe some three-and-a-half-day trips. Cedros Bonitas can be very, very good fishing, can be really, really good fishing, that, that yellowtail. It's uh, really kind of, man, that, that's a tough call. I'd love to go down there. I've spent a lot of years down there on long-range boats. Um, but we'll probably be focusing more on the two-and-a-half and three-and-a-half-day three trips, uh, especially – and I'm not predicting anything, but usually post El Nino, you start seeing some albacore. Um, with as warm as the water is, it's hard to say, but two and a half days uh, offshore, early spring like that, if there's bluefin and uh, albacore around. And we, it looks like we're getting our bluefin back in Mexico. Um, it looks like they're they're going to allow, like that, allow that, us that a, happened, a two yeah. fish limit. Um, and, and after what we've had to deal with here over the last couple of years, that sounds like really fun trips to me, doing some uh, right. some smaller range, two-and-a-half days, stuff like that. Um, usually if you're going to see a fall, any kind of uh, longer trips like that, we'll, we'll do them in the fall. We did have a five-day next week that we turned into a day-and-a-half trip. Same kind, of, uh, same kind of deal is the fish have been so close lately that uh, I'm not going to say there's no reason for it because there, has, there is some really, really good fishing to be had on those uh, those five day trips, but our our fish are close. Yeah. We're, we're gonna stay here. It's good fishing right right in our backyard. How nice is it too to have a boat like the Tribute? And I'm sure David, you've been on the boat, can attest to it that you know you you have a boat that was built for doing long trips like that. So all of these things are are options for you. They, they are, and uh, like I said, if Guadalupe opens back up, we'll, we'll definitely be doing it um, once we get our new engines and everything in and get get everything kind of yeah. put back together. Uh, we'll, we'll probably kind of decide what trips we're doing then or, or plan our schedule but it's um i, I know there is there's been people that have complained about going on three day trips this year five day trips and fishing somewhat locally but hey that's that's where the fish have been i mean there was some trips i know um guys uh on, on the excel were fishing uh, out behind san clemente island that had really good <laughs> bluefin fishing on on premium grade fish yeah why you know in, in a case like that you don't want to be down uh, 150 200 miles away from it that's just the the last two years there's been such good fishing and some really really big fish that we're gonna kind of stick uh, at least with shorter trips here for a while um the, the biggest bluefin we caught this year was 150 pounds and it was like 10 miles outside of Oceanside. <laughs> That's so cool. Hey, David, appreciate the phone call very much. I'm sure you'll have fun on the boat when uh, when when your next trip uh, makes its way over. Definitely. All right, Thank look you. forward appreciate, to seeing you. Appreciate the phone call very much. Hey, let's go to a place that I know is biting, and it's always good weather down there. And that's in the East Cape. We got the man, John Ireland from Rancho Leonero, is on the phone right now. What's up, John? Good morning, guys. I don't know where Pete's around. Hi, Mike. Hey, good morning. Pete's got we, a little uh, field research I, going on today. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a, there's a true uh, guest need a boat ride, or they don't feel like they're getting gypped. Yeah. So that's the deal on that, Mike. <laughs> same, same at the ranch. I mean, the fish can be 10 minutes in front of the hotel, but unless they get a boat ride somewhere during the day, then then uh, they haven't had their full uh, their full left. <laughs> it's just Crazy. how it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, speaking of speaking of billfish, that's what it, really the name of the game has been pretty much all year for us. We've had probably one of our best bill fishing years that I can recall, <clears throat> and then that's continued uh, of the last couple of days. We actually, the last three days, we've finally got our first real north wind, so it's blown pretty good right now. And uh, so we've been actually, uh, last two days, we've been busting people, uh, our anglers, down to Cabo, and they've been doing well down there with tuna in the Dorado. Early in the week, however, we had a lot of a lot of blues, a lot of blues over 300 pounds. It was just just a lot wow. of big blues around. Yeah, pretty good. And also, you know, we've been pretty much devoid of Dorado all year. It's been a tough, tough Dorado year for us. All the little schoolies, when you do run into them, and there was a dead uh, sea lion floating around out there early in the week, you know, holding some really nice dodos from uh, 30 to 50 pounds. Wow. Some nice, some nice bulls and all that, which was nice to see. There's still some around. A sear bite, real good sear bite in the morning. Rooster fishing's kind of slowed off a little bit, you know, we're... We're kind of winding down at the end of our season, so. But uh, I'll tell you, if uh, it gets the non-windy days, the bill fishing is just spectacular. Man, that's good. killer. Cer- certainly yeah, good indeed. times too, especially with grade that big, John. It's awesome. Well, you know, what's really interesting is the, the Grand Slam. We call it, you know, where you get a sail, a striper, and a blue or black in the same day. That's the Grand Slam, or, or in the in the same fishing trip, that would be a Grand Slam. But gosh, in the last uh, month or so, we've had at least ten people that in the same day. Uh, I've got a sale, a 
striper and a blue all in all within the space of one day or a couple hours a lot of times. So that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so good, cool. Too, too good bill fishing for sure. Well, while this good fishing is going on, is there still time if somebody wanted to sneak away and do a quick trip down to the East Cape? That's the beauty of it. So accessible, so easy to get down to the ranch. And you could be sitting at home right now and decide, you know what, I want to go have a margarita at the ranch and be there in a, in a few hours. John, any chance uh, of sliding in here before wow. the season comes to an end? Sure, there's lots of flights. Yeah, we're, uh, we do close December 1st, so you got a couple weeks for us. It's 800 646 2252 or and, and And gosh, there are lots of flights going in and out of there. That the airport's incredible how busy it is. Pretty darn cool. John, thank you so much for always keeping us up to date with what's going on at the ranch. We certainly love it, and I know how much everybody loves hearing uh, what's going on in Bob. You always do such a good job of keeping us in the loop. Thanks, Rick. It's nice talking to you and Mike. Talk All right, to you guys soon. Pre- appreciate the phone call very much. Rick Jensen from Sport Fishing Financials on the line right now. What's up, Rick? Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Great job yesterday, Rick. Uh-huh. What a lot of great deals there. I had to, I've got every piece of tackle I could ever need, but I still had to spend a few hundred dollars to save a few hundred dollars with you guys. Great work there. Thanks, man. We had a really fun time putting it on, and, and definitely I just want to take a quick sec to say thanks to everybody that came out to our big tackle days event yesterday at Fisherman's Line. We had a lot of fun doing it, so thanks, Rick. Yeah, it was a, it was a, the pleasure was definitely all ours. Well, there are a couple more Wahoo taken up off the east end of Catalina for the listeners who hadn't heard of that yet. Uh, one was speared on Friday and another caught by a solo angler yesterday just off the east end Catalina here. In November. Wild. Wild what's going on. I'll tell you a fun Wahoo story as well, Rick. A couple of good buddies of ours, Scott Nagel, who is um, one of our reps. You know, Our Iowa rep was down at Tackle Days in the morning. Our good buddy Rod Halperin was, uh, you know, fishing they they were both were at tackle days i mean we were talking to them at lunchtime you know at noon and rod uh, has their their family boat there at dana landing in mission bay and said oh we need to go we need to go run the boat it's been a while since she's been untied and go make a quick cruise and uh, they both decided well if we're going anywhere i mean as you know mike anywhere outside of about two miles outside the mission bay jetties you had a shot at a at oahu this year so left left at noon yesterday and by 2 30 there's a picture message of uh, of Scott holding a Wahoo, you know, just an, another local one, just like that, that easy. So, uh, congrats to those guys. And yeah, Rick, couldn't agree with you more. I mean, those, those things are absolutely still around. Well, that's great news. But uh, hey, I wanted to let the listeners know about a couple of events that CCA is going to be uh, involved in coming up on November 11th. They're going to be having a, an open meeting at the Long Beach Rod and Gun Club. Excellent. And uh, that starts at 5 o'clock. There'll be a taco truck there, and, you know, they've got all the raffles, and uh, all the representatives are going to be there explaining what the uh, CCA is going to be up to and what's uh, what's going to be happening with some of their goals coming up. Excellent. So that'd be a, a good one to get to. Also, uh, a week from today, on November 15th, there's a uh, Pacific Fisheries Management Council meeting where AFCO and IGFA and Several other people will be there, several other organizations uh, looking to, you know, find out what the new rules will be and what uh, what kind of support we can get for making sure that the uh, commercial fishing long lines and gill nets and that type of stuff is properly managed. So that might be a good place to get out and support protecting our rights to uh, to be involved in how fishing is handled on the commercial side. Very good calls on both, Rick. And both the CCA meeting and the PFMC, those are both open to the public. We can all uh, come and, and, you know, be a part of the process. Absolutely. Uh, the uh, Long Beach Rod and Gun Club, 5 o'clock, they'll have a taco truck there. And uh, looking forward to anybody who wants to come in and, and, and enjoy a little time together and learn more about what the CCA is doing. That's awesome, Rick. Well, hey, great, uh, great information. Thanks for keeping us up to date. And uh, how about the Sport Fishing Financial? Are you guys keeping busy with that? Any, uh, any, fun, any fun trips? Anything new and exciting in that world? Well, we we had a, a big October, as you know, and uh, back to work, working hard here lately, putting in some days. But come Thanksgiving weekend, we'll be back down to Baja chasing some <laughs> uh, late fall yellowtail or something, I'm sure. That sounds awesome, Rick. We well, appreciate it very much. Had fun seeing you yesterday, and thanks for keeping us up to date with everything going on with CCA. Thanks, guys. All right, Rick. Thanks a lot for that. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. We're going to check in with our catch reports, find out what's biting out, putting down the beach, and the phone lines are absolutely packed solid. A big block of your phone calls when we return. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090.
Everyone likes special treatment. You know, kind of feel like a VIP. Well, that's how our listeners are treated at Poway Valley Collision. I have personally heard of several stories of how well our friends Jim and Mary take care of their customers that we sent them. Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. We know you may not need them today, but when accidents happen, it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. And listen to this. Our listeners get a special discount that can save you hundreds of dollars on your car or truck repair. Just tell them you listen to the show and you get the deal. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, Met. Life, Wawanisa, and more. Just bring your car or truck to them and let Poway Valley Collision do the rest. I have had my truck repaired at Poway Valley Collision and the job was perfect. So get your vehicle fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. Tell them you listen to Let's Talk Hookup and they'll save you money on your repair. Poway Valley Collision, 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. For East Cape Fishing, Jen Ren is known as the best. This is Mark Rayer. Great service, top quality equipment, including all accurate reels, Cal Star rods, and Cibber Analytic electronics has put my immaculately maintained twin engine cruisers in a class of their own for memories of a lifetime just bring your hat and sunglasses and we'll provide a fishing experience that will exceed your expectations our calendar's filling fast so don't miss out for packages two live webcams a weekly fisher report and more check out teamgenren.com we pick up at all east cape resorts so let's go fishing all right, it's time for our Power Pro 60-second seminar on your next trip. Be sure to get that Power Pro advantage. Talking about Power Pro, talking about this great fishing going on right now, versatility of Power Pro. That's the big thing is ability to change top shot, be able to fish condition, be able to fish bait size. You know, not everything is a constant in fishing, and having a line like a Power Pro, a backing on your midsize reel, a 50- or 65-pound test, you know, and a shorter-to-average length top shot is going to allow you to adjust as conditions call for. So you get out on the bite, it's a little bit picky, a little bit scratchy, you need to drop down your top shot size. Very easy with a spool of Power Pro. And also bait, you know, with the baits changing, anchovy someday, sardine the next, ability to fish lighter line, heavier line on the same outfit. It's the advantage you're looking for. It's Power Pro. For more information, check out your local dealer, or for more, you can always check out PowerPro.com. Want to catch the yellowfin tuna of a lifetime but don't have weeks at a time to commit trying? Then check out Journeyman Sport Fishing in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Based in Nuevo Vallarta, Journeyman offers an angling dream come true. Outstanding world-class fishery, immaculately maintained and outfitted boat, ultra-limited competition at the rail, and a Journeyman crew that has the experience and passion to make your angling dreams reality. A two-and-one-half day trip offers two full days of fishing from sunup to sundown and only requires four days away from from your other commitments. In the 2013 season, Journeyman landed dozens of yellowfin, over 200 pounds, and several over 300. Choose the trip that fits your schedule. Two and one half, three and one half, up to eight days of the ultimate fishing for giant yellowfin tuna. For complete details, check the web at journeymansportfishing.com or contact 619-571-1979. Journeyman Sport Fishing, where angling dreams become reality. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. The best NFL coverage is right here. Hot inside the pylon for a touchdown. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Hookup! Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the mighty 1090. As promised, we're going to find out what's biting out there. It is time for the catch report, which today is sponsored in part by Gamakatsu Hooks, Japan's leading fish hook that sets the standard for quality and innovation, strength, and durability. It's a long-range season, and the Gamakatsu Nautilus Circle Hook, Ring Hooks, and their standard J-Hooks are top anglers' first choice for fishing for tuna and other pelagic species. It has the right design and durability to help you catch that fish of a lifetime. Get Gamakatsu Super Nautilus Hooks at your favorite tackle store. Let's start it off up at Dana War Sport Fishing. Talk to the man, Captain Brian Woolley's on the line. What's up, Woolley? Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? Doing great. Good morning. morning. Good, good. Hey, uh, just you know, I'll just kind of jump right into it here. We're, uh, you know, we're certainly seeing what you'd kind of expect with that slight drop in the water after that gnarly wind this week. Uh, you know, we fished uh, water this week. It was like 66 to 68, you know, along the beach. You know, it kind of varied from day to day through the week. But uh, with that slight drop, we've uh, seen some real good sign of that yellow tail moving in uh, down below the harbor there. You know, it's kind of right where we hoped it would be, out in that deep water over the hard bottom. And we're starting to see some pretty decent-sized schools down in that sector. Uh, you know, it's relatively new fish, so it's still trying to kind of settle in a little bit. But, uh you know, the scores have kind of varied from day to day. I know there's a couple of days earlier in the week with like six to ten fish. But yesterday there was just under thirty of those fish in our counts for the guys that fished it. Wow. So that stuff, you know, we're we're just kinda of stoked to see that stuff 
Awesome. Just like it was last year, starting to move in and, you know, kind of do its thing. So dropper loop, you know, certainly was what, uh, you know, was needed yesterday. A little bit of current down there. So guys fishing that 8 to 10 ounce dropper loop with the sardine seem to uh, have a better advantage over the guys actually fishing the yo-yo jig yesterday. So, you know, there's good feed down there to keep this fish local. So, uh, you know, we got that win this week. So we'll kind of see how that uh, stuff settles in and plays out. On the uh, halibut derby front, you know, we uh, kicked out off on Friday on the Sun Fund. We were able to get uh, nine nice fish on the leaderboard for uh, those anglers that came out on Friday. Biggest fish was right around 24 pounds. So uh, stoked to see some names on that. And that's a you know long, long derby, guys. The stuff goes, runs until May. So still plenty of time to get your name on that leaderboard. And then the half-day stuff, you know, again, with that little, you know, drop in the water temp, things did slow down a little bit from that phenomenal bass fishing. We're still catching fish. You know, some good bonitos, some good bass and whatnot, and some fish on the bottom for that matter. But things have just taken a little bit of hit there with that cooler water temp. So, you know, it's kind of where we expected it to be with that weather, but uh, still phenomenal opportunity. And definitely we're going to keep tabs on that yellow tail this week, so weather permitting, of course. So if you guys want to hop on a trip, definitely recommend making a reservation. You can call the landing at 949-496-5794. They can get you booked, or you can, uh, you know, check us out online at danawharf.com. And on these local trips, guys, these three-quarter day trips, you can definitely take advantage of that less talk, less talk hookup discount. You can link us right there on their front web page there, and it'll take you right over. And you can book it from there. You know, super simple, no passport needed or any of that stuff to fish up here. So give us a call. We'll get you out on the boat this week. Awesome, man. Great info right there, Wooly. Great fishing going on. It was just like we talked about in the last couple of weeks, that bait starting to move in, the water condition getting right. Kind of like what we were just talking about with Mike, too. It's really nice seeing this fall winter conditions stacking up exactly the same way yesterday and the, the fish falling in right in line behind them. That's it. You know, you can hope and you can wish, but when you start seeing this stuff pattern out, you know, last year, this year, it's just, you know, it's, it's good for everybody. So we'll, we'll keep tabs and hope it bites again for us this week. Life is good, Willie. As soon as that weather's off, I know you guys will be right back on it again. Appreciate a great report. We'll look forward to talking to you next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Take I think, care. Brian, pre- appreciate that very much. Hey, phone lines are absolutely packed. The only phone line coming into the building right now, one of our toll-free numbers, 877-792-1090. Or you can try us at local one, 858-457-1090. We're waiting to hear from Gundy Gunderson. We're going to jump right back into the phones, this time talking to Mike, calling us from Allied Gardens this morning. Good morning, Mike. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, what a great show already, man. <laughs> Thanks, Hot Mike. Fisted, boy. Hey, I was thinking about uh, what kind of gear these days. Boy, every, it seems like everything's changed with Wahoo being able to be caught and just a whole different <laughs> a plethora of fish being able to be caught. Uh, what kind of gear would a guy take with all these changes on a day-and-a-half trip? Oh, what man. Recommend? Uh, it... <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, thankfully, we, we hold a lot of rods. I, I think we have... <laughs> 210 rod uh, holders on the boat. So I I don't think you have to worry about bringing too much gear. Well, I I take that back. I've seen people bring too much gear. (laughs) You know what? uh, Bring a jig stick on any one of these trips. A nice thing about Wahoo fishing is it's very, very similar to yellowtail fishing, uh, yo-yo fishing. Something that you can cast, something with a a decent gear ratio on it. And um, uh, how do you talk about Wahoo gear on on a day and a half trip? Bring some jigs. Um, I, me personally, if I was fishing on a boat this year, and I, I know I said it several times on whether it was on this show, on our Facebook page, or whatever, um, if you have wire leaders, if you do do some long range trips, it doesn't hurt to have a couple of them in your box. Heck yeah. Um, I know there was a couple of trips that I ran here this year where if guys would have been fishing wire, we would have had six or seven Wahoo uh, 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 out of a stop. I mean, they'd wow. come through, they'd bite everybody off. We got a couple on the jigs, a couple on the marauders. Um, Something like that, you just bring a few jigs with you, maybe a, a couple of wire leaders. I, I wouldn't really go overboard on it. But if for some reason uh, the boat stops on a kelp and you see Wahoo, um, you get a jig strike coming up to it, that would be the time, you know, you have your you, you have your jig stick set up with a, either a wired Wahoo jig or something like that. Um, and it doesn't hurt. I mean, how many people have caught a, a local Wahoo? Lately, quite a bit. I mean, there was actually a really, really good chance of catching them on a boat this year. They, uh, they there was two of them caught on the uh, San Diego uh, here th- in the last week. I mean, and quite a few more hooked and lost, exactly as you were describing. You know, I mean, the first 
I think the first six or eight guys that went in the water that day, ping, 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 they oh, yeah. all, you know, they were all going away, and, and a couple <clears throat> that happened to be on, you know, yo-yo jigs and things like that stuck, and the fish came aboard. I, I, I didn't get a personal Wahoo this year. Uh, uh, Captain Hensley did. He got one. I got one last year. And, and it's just there's – I've caught a lot of Wahoo fishing down south. There's something really satisfying about it. Oh. I mean, where you can see – you're like, hey, look, the Coronados. Here's my Wahoo. <laughs> yeah, um, totally. But <laughs> I, you also want to make sure that you bring some lighter gear, too. We had really, really good anchovy fishing this year, if we could get decent bait. Um, if you could – really, anything from 20 pound up. I I personally wouldn't say bring anything lighter than 20 pound, but – you know, have have some spools of fluorocarbon. Um, soft steel ultra is what we use. We uh, we carry um, fluoro on the boat. It it really it gives you just a little bit of a uh, an advantage having fluoro. So anything from like 20 to 50 pound, um, a, a, okay. you know, assortment of rods. There was times where we were getting that bigger bluefin earlier in the year, and uh, one of the lady anglers that was on our boat ended up getting one on. Um, well, as we slid up on it, I, I saw how big the fish were. I said I wouldn't go in the water with anything lighter than 50 pound. She drops in with 50 pound, um, a two speed avit, and she hooks this fish and kills it in like 10 minutes. So, Rad. wow, 50, 60 pounds starting to push it. But I mean, it, it doesn't hurt, hurt to have a little bit of an assortment anywhere from 20 on up to 50 or 60. Especially with yeah. the, the kind of years we've yeah. had, you just you want to cover your bases. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't bring out a 50 wide and 100 pound, but you still bring up, <laughs> you still bring up with the fishing that's going on right now that, that Jake had, and we obviously heard Drew have. Do you still bring a popper right now? <laughs> Me? Yes, I would. All right. I like and I, I do have hey. to give profit, uh, props to that girl, Sophie, that, that killed that thing. That, that was pretty awesome. And how big was Sophie's fish? Uh, I think it was 149 pounds at the dock wow. after his blood and everything. <laughs> oh, cool. So. Real, real quick, I had a golfer ask me, uh, why do you need so many different poles? I said, that would be like <laughs> you going out going out golfing with your nine iron and a putter, and that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. Got a different tool for the job. Hey, Mike, yeah. appreciate the phone call very much. Thanks a lot for that. We're going to continue on with the catch port. We got our man, the surf guru, Gundy Gunderson's on the line. What's up, Gundy? Hey, what's happening, guys? Doing great, Gundy. How's the surf fishing? Well, you know, we got. I think we got what we wanted, Rick. We got a, you know, a little come down in the water temperature, and with it, we we've got a lot more bait inside, and the corbina. Bite has picked up. The sand crabs have popped up, especially around the structure. The guys were finding crabs along the piers, the jetties, uh, you know, maybe bring a little shovel. You got to dig a little bit, but the guys finding the crab were scoring those corbina. So we'll start, we'll, we'll start up north. Um, let's see, up Santa Barbara way. They had a little tournament up there this week on Saturday and the anglers reported lots of calico bass and that was something up and down the coast. And I think it's a function of the bait, but real good calico bass action off the rocks and stuff. They had a few sargo, a few perch, some calves on, a few halibut up there. Usually you see good perching this time of year, but, you know, we're still in the high 60s up there, so the water's a little a little, little bit warm. They're fishing butterfly beach. Wiley's reported good calico bass fishing with some grass rockfish, Topanga, Nicholas County line. Big fish reported good morning bite there in that Long Beach area on Corbina. Bolsa Chica sunset was... Uh, probably the better beaches, and like I said, the sand crab surface, and the anglers were finding the best bite early in the morning. There's been overcast in the morning, and sometimes that overcast can be what you need to kick those fish into a bite. The better fish were around four pounds, so it's really good quality and, and plenty of fish. The bite also picked up off river jetties, the street jetties there in Newport, and the water there is holding 68, 69 degrees. Hogan's reported excellent spot pin bite. Uh, the fish were throughout Capo Bay there. The long rotters casting outside the surf line were getting them. And then uh, the, the best area, though, was Doheny and in and around the harbor. Fish up to four pounds. Lugworms fished with a fluorocarbon leader. You know, I like to fish like 12 pounds, maybe 15 pounds on the spot thing because there are some better models, some, some pushing tide. And then Pacific Coast reported good Corbina action. Army, Navy, South Carlsbad, Table Rock, Del Mar River Mouth, Torrey Pines. Uh, again, cooler water, more sand crabs. So, uh, you know, it's kind of what we were looking at there. We got some storms coming through, but there's still plenty of warm water. So you got to pick these days, you know, like we're looking at now where you got nice conditions and get out there, and there's still plenty of fish in the surf line. Pick, pick your days, get the right day, and you're going to get rewarded with an awesome fishing just like that. Gundy, great report, man. So cool to hear that this is all going on in November. <laughs> I know. I know. 
I know. I, I think I'll call it down. We're going to see a few Corbina caught into December. So rad. <laughs> so yeah. rad. Gundy, great report. Appreciate that as always. Look forward to talking next week. All right, gentlemen. Always a pleasure. Have a good week. You do the same, Gundy. Appreciate that. All right. Jumping back into the phone, Sam in Irvine. You're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Sam. Good morning. Um, uh, morning, Mike. I, I, uh, this is the first year I didn't make it out on the tribute because there was I just could not get on the schedule. I mean, it was so wide open. <laughs> that, that's a good uh, thing. That, I love your boat. I love the way that it's set up. If you do any of that remodeling, I, I love the way your tackle storage sets up on that. So, uh, Yes, uh, it's, it's very user-friendly. Yeah, it's probably the best boat. I tried a lot of them this year just trying to get out there, and i got to say yours is the best. But my question is, where will you be fishing the day and a half in the days through the winter? Are you doing day trips during the winter? Is it all going to be day and a half? No, no, we're going to stick with the day and a half trips. Uh, one thing with this time of year, you, uh, especially with that Cortez and the Tanner Bank, you don't want to put yourself into a position where you can't get out there. And, and on a one-day trip, it's just too far. Uh, I've seen it on a one-day trip, but you don't want to. It's, it, you know, it's 10 <laughs> hours. Uh, no reason to to cut yourself short. Day and a half trips like we uh, did last year and like we're doing, uh, we just got in from, we have one Friday night. Usually on these trips you get out there, uh, we're going to change our schedule to where we're leaving about an hour earlier, uh, 8 p.m. You get out there just after daylight, you fish until dark and come back in. On a one-day trip, you wouldn't be able to do that. And uh, uh, the year before last, we did a lot of colonnette trips, um, very, very good rockfish fishing and lingcod fishing down there. Right now, we're not going to commit to one thing or another. They're going to be day-and-a-half trips, um, and we're going to put day-and-a-half trips up throughout December for right now. Nice. And then uh, try to see where we go as far as our maintenance and our repower goes. So um, we're obviously going to have to to set in for about a month and a half for that to get that all taken care of. But there's going to be day-and-a-half trips online. Right now, they're going to be freelance trips. If that Cortez and that Tanner Bank keep biting, um, and especially up until January, because you can keep rockfish and uh, lingcod out there, there is right. some very, yeah. very good bottom fishing. I mean, phenomenal bottom fishing out there. And you have a chance of catching tuna and yellowtail with it. So uh, as of right now, they're going to be freelance uh, open party trips. If for some reason that slows down, we might focus on calling it. Uh, but we're going to basically go wherever the, the better fishing is for now. Well, great. So I can probably finally get on your boat. It was a, it was a great <laughs> summer. But, you know, for me, getting on your boat this year was a real, real uh, challenge. Uh, you got to, um, especially during the the season. A lot of times, you got to look over a, a week in advance, and um, more than any, more than anything, you 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 have to just want to go fishing. A lot of guys wait to look at the fish count. We've had very very good fishing for the last couple of years. There has been slow trips. I, I mean, there some of them have been real hit or miss. But you, more than anything, you want to be able to get on the boat, come out and enjoy your day on the water. Uh, chance to fish with some really good guys. Chance to fish on a really nice boat, and. Uh, if you if you try to wait till the fish are biting, you're all of a sudden going to find yourself in a position where there's 32 people that beat you to the punch. That's it, man. <laughs> you, you know when you book on a trip on the Tribute that you're going to have a great time on a very professional boat that's very comfortable, and you're going to have a lot of fun out there doing it. And it's a cliche thing, but the fish really is the bonus. Like You know that Mike and the boys are going to handle all of the all of the things that they can handle the best way possible, and then... If that fish is good, which it was most of the year, and boy, it still is. I mean, fantastic fishing going on right now. You know, you're going to have a great one. Sam, appreciate the phone call very much. All right, thanks for joining us there. Hey, when we come back, we got more Let's Talk Cookup coming your way, more of your phone calls, more great information. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Cookup on the Mighty 1090. Imagine being home in the morning and fishing yellowtail and calicos at Cedros Island by the afternoon. Now you can with Cedros Adventures. Experience world-class yellowtail and calico fishing aboard comfortable pongas with local captains that know the island hotspots. Stay in Cedros Adventures' own private waterfront hotel and experience first-class meals and service with pickups in L.A., Orange, or San Diego County. You hop aboard a scheduled flight to Cedros Island to begin an incredible experience. Trips are all inclusive and offer old world hospitality and fantastic fishing. Cedros Adventures. Call 310-435-6353 or check cedrosadventures.com for rates and more information. It's Yamaha's Why Wait Buy Now sales event. For a limited time, eligible new 75 to 350 horsepower four strokes include six years of warranty coverage. And eligible new 2.5 to 70 horsepower four strokes come with up to $500 in dealer credit. See your nearest Yamaha Outboards dealer for details or visit yamahaoutboards.com. Yamaha. 
Reliability starts here. Offer ends November 18, 2015. Subject to change at any time. Other restrictions and conditions apply. Choice offered to Florida residents is a 36-month Yamaha Limited Warranty. See authorized participating Yamaha Ford dealers for details. This promotion cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. XSRFS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You are listening to the home of the Aztecs. He's gone. Touchdown. Aztecs. San Diego sports leader. The mighty 1090. Information is the key to success, and inside information is even better. When it comes to fishing, inside information is critical, and that's what FishDope.com delivers. FishDope.com really does help you catch more fish and save fuel. FishDope.com is the only SST service with a satellite oceanographic PhD on board, the only fish-finding service with a spotter plane. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. FishDope.com boasts the largest code group anywhere, covering sport boats, commercial boats, and private boaters. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. What I'm telling you is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, good luck. Membership costs less than 40 gallons of gas for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, stay tuned for the special code to save $20 on a Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long range fishing experience. A spring eight day, summer five day, or a fly down fly back 11 day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top of the line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at RoyalStarSportFishing.com or call Tracy at 619 224 4764. The summer fishing season season this year was nothing short of incredible and everyone I talked to is expecting continued success well into the fall season. Your San Diego County Ford dealers are having a remarkable summer too with no sign of slowing down. They continue to hook people up with a great selection of models that offer outstanding MPG and advanced technology like the fun to drive focus and the popular fusion available as a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Ford also has an impressive list of SUVs like Escape, Edge, Explorer, and Expedition. Well, no matter what you need, Ford has an SUV for you. And for serious fishermen that have boats to haul and gear to move, you can't beat the Ford F-150. It's not only stronger than ever, it's 700 pounds lighter, so it's faster and more efficient. Bottom line, Ford cars and trucks and SUVs are built for San Diego. Stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. 